Welcome to Glory in God Anointed Ministry. I am Pastor Gavin Critchworth with our Sunday School Lesson. Hallelujah. Our Sunday School Lesson is coming from Hebrews chapter 10, verse 19. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the Sunday School Lesson. We thank you for everything you're going to do in this service as well as the Sunday school. And we ask that all the words fall on good so you to bring for fruit that's edifying for your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. We want to thank God for everything that transpired this month. And as I've been home studying the word of God, it came to me in, in, in such a way that the knowledge that I need to share with the people is very important. And one of the things we need to know is that we need to hold on to God. No matter what may happen, we need to hold on to God. I don't care if there's a tsunami, millions are hurt, I gotta hold on to God. I'm gonna pray for you, I'm gonna do everything I can for you, but I will not leave God because of you. I will not leave God because of situations in the world. I will not leave God because of how I feel towards things that's happening that I might not understand. So I'm going to keep my mind on Jesus no matter what happens. So in other words, what he's saying in this Sunday school lesson, do not let crisis stop you from praising God. Do not let crisis stop you from giving God the glory because it's because of God that you are alive. Without God, you would not be here. And if you're not, praise the Lord anyhow for those that are not. So this is something I have to say. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 19. Having therefore brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus Christ, by a new and living way. Ain't that something? A new and living way. Not a dead and old way but a new and living way the way is Jesus Christ I am the way the truth and the life so we have a living way in Jesus Christ which he have consecrated for us through the veil that is to say his flesh oh my god so when the temple veil ripped in two that was his flesh that's what he said through the veil that is to say his flesh Jesus is the temple that was destroyed. Jesus is the temple that rose up the third day. That was built back up. So when they thought it was the earthly temple. Which fell apart. He was talking about himself. So this is something we needed to know. His flesh. And having a high priest over the house of God. My God. Jesus is a high priest. Over the house of God. Let us draw near with a true heart. In full assurance of faith. Other words, no room for doubt. No disbelief. Okay. Insurance of faith. We cannot come to him without knowing he is who he said he is. And that he will do what he said he will do. Having our hearts sprinkled from all evil conscience. From an evil conscience. Thinking that foolishness. And our bodies washed with pure water. What is the pure water? The word of God. The Bible said the water of God, the word of God washes you. Why right? that's no the word of God washes you. He says in, in, in the Bible that the husband should wash his wife with the word. The word of God is what washes you. And what is the word of God? Jesus Christ. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. Just like I said earlier, I don't care if it's a flood, I don't care if it's a hurricane. I don't care if it's earthquake, I don't care if it's whatever. Do not waver on your love towards God no matter what happened. Whenever a trial or crisis came my way, I still praise God after, during, and before. Nothing changed. Nothing stopped. I might have lost 18 jobs and I'm still praising God. I might have lost five houses, but I'm still praising God. I might have lost three cars, but I'm still praising God. I don't waver. You shouldn't waver. Nothing in this world should make you turn away from God. I don't care what it is. 
Because the Bible says so. Without wavering, for he is faithful that promise. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and the good works. I like that. Our job is to provoke love. Cause a reason for love. Provoke good works. Cause a reason so I can do some good work. Not cause it to stumble or cause it to cause confusion, but to cause it so I can provoke love and good work in you as well as in me. Like I said before, I say it again. When you in ministry, you come last. I don't care what I might say I'm wrong. I don't care what you say. I come last. People of God come before me. People of the world come before me. So when we eat it, you can make my plate first, but unto everybody else, hell. People come first. I will give my plate to the, to the visitor. Because people are sent from God for a reason. I'm already full. My job is to help those that are not full get full. So if I can't share my earthly food, then what I'm going to share my spiritual food. Right. I got to let go of my plate as well as my Bible and my wisdom and my knowledge to those that need. That's what he's saying. Provoke unto love and good works because God will provide. God is faithful to do what he said he would do. Amen? I love 25, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together. Not forsaking, in other words, not turning away from, not staying away from, not dealing with each other. So I can say this, when somebody say, leave me alone, they say, help me get to Christ. Okay. So you might leave them alone for that second or minute, but don't just disregard them. Call two days later and say, I know you told me to leave you alone, but how are you feeling today? Don't you know God still love you? No matter what happened, I have a commission from God to at least say God bless you. No offense. I know you don't like me. I know you, uh, you have a problem with me, but I have to say God bless you. Because I love all people. And, and this is what he's saying. Don't forsake the assembly of ourselves together. Otherwise, some say don't come. We should all come together and do the work of the Lord in church, which is fine. But don't forsake your assembly or your brethren after church. When church is over, what you do? Go home and forget about who was there? No. That's forsaking the assembly. Even though an assembly is when we all come together, but still in all, we are still together when we leave here. So don't forsake your brothers and sisters. Don't forsake the members of the church. Always stay in touch. Always stay in touch. Always give a good, kind word. I didn't say get into their business. I didn't say get them into your business. I did not say tell them what's going on in the church. I just said get in touch and say God bless you. Have a nice day. God love you and etc. But I did not say go and tell them how we had this service and we did this in the church. No, once they disappear and they're not here no longer, you don't have to tell them what goes on. But you can always pray and say, I'll be thinking about you and God bless you. Amen? Amen? This is one of the things we need to know. We do not accept, forsake the assembly of ourselves together as the manner of some is. Do you know what they mean there? These days people think, I'm too good for you. I'm not going to go to your church. I'm not going to go to your ministry. I'm not going to go where you at because I'm too sophisticated. I'm too educated. I'm too bougie. Who in the world are you to tell me you too bougie? When Jesus made himself of no reputation, a lonely person, but you too much to fellowship with? What, what is going on here? Because that's you, not Jesus Christ. See, when you come in the name of Jesus, you don't care how messed up you may be, you come humble and assured that God is with you. It's not how you look. It's not always how you act. It's how you know God is with you. You can have some of the weakest people come with the most astounding words because they know in their heart God is with them. I might not have everything. I might not be millionaire, but I know I have something. And that's Jesus saves and he can save you like he saved me. And that's all you need in life. 
So I can boldly come with assurance knowing that Jesus saved me and he can save you. So you got something to tell somebody. You don't have to worry about being forsaken. Because what is lacking is everybody should treat everybody as the same body of Christ. We are all under one leadership. Jesus and God. There's no big you. There's no little me. There's no big. There's just Jesus and God. We all work towards perfection to get into the kingdom of God. So why are you acting like you want that? This is what happened. This is what happened. I think it was with Peter. And Paul, when Paul come, when the Jews come, he like, wait, 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 no, it was James, no, it was Peter, Peter, wait, 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 you can't be that way when we're here and in this way when they're there, we are all God's people, Jews, Gentiles, Greeks, barbarians, we all God people, treat us all with respect, treat us all the same, you don't have to treat me worse because of I don't have a collar or a, a, a shirt. Treat me like you would treat anybody with a thousand dollar robe. Because the words I bring are priceless. And this is what's going on. You don't look like us, so you can't be like us. And I had that happen to me recently. Recently, I went into church not dressed down with my beautiful self, yeah. but looking like a regular street person, go ahead, go ahead. which I am, go ahead. walked in there and got disrespected in the church. Uh -uh. And I said to myself, Lord, is this real? Oh That's discrimination yes. in the body of Christ. Do you discriminate over me? Otherwise, if I would have had on my, what I got on, you would have escorted me all the way to the front. But because I didn't have that, I couldn't walk myself to the front. Oh, no, no, you got to stop here. I, 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 I. No, this is what happened. And the Lord tells me to do these things. He said, go, just see. He showed me some more stuff I can't explain right now, but it's crazy. And I, I, I got a question for everyone that might view this or everyone that's here. Go home and answer this question. What do you do when people use you for God's glory? What do you do when people use you for God's glory? I can't believe it. I was sitting in there and, and talking to God and I'm like, God, and this question came to me. People are being used. What do you do when people are using you for God's glory? You can't get a hasty answer. You got to go home and study and say, wait, what should I really do? Because one part of me want to say, well, stop letting them use you. But then another part say, well, it's God's glory. So you stop being God. You know, you need to think about this. So I'm saying to myself, Lord, who can answer that for? What do you do? I know I heard the message stand, which is good. And after all, stand some more, which is good. But what do you really do when you know they're using you? Hey Amen. I'm going to leave that right there. Where we at? But exhorting one another, verse 25, and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. So we need to love more because the day is coming when all hell will break out worse than it is. So we need to love more. We need to up exhort more. We need to uplift more. Stop beating people up. Stop bringing people down. I don't care if you never move in the church. You're there. So don't think I'm mad because you ain't shouting or dancing or singing or praising. You're there. That's very important. You're there and I thank you for being there. Jesus, glory. If you never shout, if you never say a word, I just thank you for being in the presence of the Lord. People wish they could come. 
So you should thank God for those that do come. I don't care if you don't shout. I don't care if you don't sing. I don't care if you don't dance. I don't care if you don't testify. At least you are there. And this is where we lose it at. Oh, they sitting down on Christ. Oh, they, what are you doing? You need them to move for you to move? Well, then you just keep on moving and don't worry about them because when it's their time, they will be moving. Everybody don't move because you move. When they get the spirit to eat in them, it's a quickening spirit. It did not quicken me yet. So I'm still sitting. But once it quickened me, then I'm going to be moving. But just because you say move don't mean I'm going to move. Why am I preaching when I should be Sunday school? But this is how it is today. For Sunday school. He's bringing me to a different understanding of him. And he said that people need to know this. They need to know that it's not about you anymore. It's about them. So when it's about them, you don't beat them up because they're not praising them. You know, it made people not want to come back. And it happened to me. I, I didn't want to come back to some places, but I had to because God said you got to be strong. In order for you to be strong, you got to go through hell. If you go through hell, you can come out. Pure go. But you don't want to go through nothing. You can't go through it. So I was disrespected and ridiculed and sat down and all this stuff. And it hurted me because people telling me, I said, if you only knew I praise more than you. Like Apostle Paul said, I speak in tongues more than you all. He's the chief. I'm the chiefest apostle. I speak in tongues. I do more than you all. But you just don't know that. Because what I do is in secret and behind closed doors between me and God. I don't have to show you everything I do. But you talk about me like I don't do it. He ain't got no power. Look how he's sitting there. Look defeated. Looks are deceiving, my brother. Looks are deceiving. Just because I might look defeated <laughs> by a long way, I might have been. I'm praying to the enemy. You gotta know how to pray to the enemy. You can't be always one way. He know how to get you. He gotta be confused and say, wait a minute, ain't that the person that used to be? Why he's like that today? Ain't that the person that was always dressed? Why he ain't dressed today? That confused the enemy. Yeah. Now the enemy is like, wait a minute. I ain't got to make him bummy. He already bummy. <laughs> but he don't know you chose to be just for that moment. So you confuse the enemy. So you don't have to be the same way all the time. You don't have to shout and dance and jump and wave and wide all the time. Sometimes you just wait for God. I don't know why he took me there. He took something else. Another thing that come up, come to me a lot. And I don't wait like to put it on me because you got to learn this stuff. And they're going out, out into the airways because people go through this. People will stereotype you. They will say you ain't got the power because you ain't doing what, you, what they do. Be yourself. I don't care where I go. I'm myself. If I'm not the kind to do that, I'm not going to act like I could do that. That is not what I do. This is what I do. Now when I don't do this, I'm out of place. I can't get out of, I was thinking about all that, Lord, I'm like, Lord, why, don't, why? He said, because that's not you. Right. Right now. Everybody got their own gift, everybody got their own wisdom, everybody got their own way of doing things. But the way he got me is this way. And I love it. I'm not ashamed at what you do. Don't worry about what I do. Because I'm living the way God wants me to live. I don't show and tell. This is not a game. I never got in this for a game. God pulled me out of that street, pulling a shopping cart, selling scrap metal to the junkyard for three years, living in the street in the abandoned building, not to come in church and play with God. He pulled me out of that street so I could teach somebody what God can do for them. So if you don't see me doing what I do do, does not mean I don't have the power. It just means I have it in a different level. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead now. Verse 26. Go ahead. For if we sin willingly, willfully, after that we have received that knowledge of the truth, there were made of no more sacrifice for sin. Do not sin because you know you can. Okay. Yes. Be it a mistake. 
mistake. Please let it be a mistake. Don't willfully do it. Don't willfully do it. He said it's more better. It's like a dog returning to his body. Yes, when you return back to what you are delivered from. Now, it's going to come. You might fall victim, but when you search out it, then you're messing up. Because, see, you get delivered, the same thing going to come back in a season, you might fall victim because it caught you off guard. But if you get delivered and change that thing you were delivered from, that's disgusting. Lying delivered out of me. Why am I gonna go look for lie again? Now, if something happened and I might lie by accident, then Lord forgive me, but I'm not gonna intentionally go and lie. Then what's the point of being delivered from it if you're gonna intentionally do it? People gotta understand this stuff. Rightly divide the word of God as it pertains to your life. In all things, give thanks. I want to thank God for everything that transpired over the years of my life because it brought me to where I'm at today. I am not afraid. I am not ashamed. And God made me know who I am in Him. I don't need to prove myself to nobody. God shows Himself mighty. Remember what I said five years ago? I said, I don't have to look good. God looks good in me. I don't have to dress good because God dressed good in me. God does it. I don't try to glow. He makes me glow. I don't try to shine. He just shine me up. I don't try to have perfect speech. He just edifies my speech. He does it. So when I come before kings, I don't worry about what to say because he knows how to say it in the right tone of voice to move the heart. So, remember that. We learn it in Sunday school. We learn it how to live holy. We learn it what we need to avoid and what we need to do in the church because you cannot treat people bad. I keep hearing this. Treat people the way you want to be treated. If you didn't like it when it was done to you, why are you doing it to them? I didn't like it when they kept telling me you must not be saved. You must not be delivered. You must got a lot of burdens because you're not moving. Because you're not clapping. Because you're not jumping. And I said to myself, why are you looking at me so much? Ain't your mind should be on Jesus, not what I'm doing. I mean, really. I know it's yours, but why are you focusing on me? If I want to crawl and roll around, leave me alone. If I want to sit and not, leave me alone. If I want to shout and praise, leave me alone. But why are you focusing on what I'm not doing? This baffles me. And this is what I want the church not to do. Don't focus on what people are doing. Focus on what people need. Focus on what people want. Why are you coming? How can I help you? How can I make your day better? What can I do to put a smile on it? What can I say to uplift you? Read the audience. Read the people. Show them what God gave you. But don't worry about what they do. So I'm learning. I say, Lord, guide me so I don't be like that. Why are you not dancing? Why are you not clapping your hands? Why are you not? Wait a minute. First of all, I'm not your member. So you shouldn't be talking to me that way anyway. I'm your visitor. So if I'm a visitor, I don't have to do anything but relax. You're visiting my house. I can't tell you go cook and clean and do every day in my house. I'm visiting your house. Why should I have to? And I'm a visitor. You want me to cook? 